this is let's start the class uh do you do you remember that test number three is on tuesday april 2nd it will be open from 8 to 11 p.m okay it's one hour test but i leave it open for uh, three hours so to accommodate everyone do not miss the test if you miss the test and if you have a good uh, excuse you will have to take it okay at 8 a.m in person in my office so make sure not to miss that test okay it's open from 8 p.m to 11 p.m on tuesday april 2nd you don't need to to log at 8 p.m it's just that that way everyone can can do it okay so i will repeat that over and over until until tuesday um so let's review again okay so if you have a straight wire remember when you use when you use your right hand here your thumb it's going to be the wire and the magnetic field is curling around okay so you can see here you have a compass and or a dipole that will be called a magnetic dipole so it could be, for example, a small magnet here. So that will be the north and that will be the south. And you see the dipole always wants to align itself with the magnetic field. As you get closer here, you see it's going to be stronger. As you move away, the magnetic field will decrease as one over the distance. Now, when you are using your right hand for a loop of current, it's the opposite. Okay, so it means your thumb becomes the magnetic field and your fingers are um, the, the current flowing inside the loop. Okay, so you curl around the, the loops here. So it's like a solenoid and the thumb will show you the north. That vector here, it's called the magnetic dipole. Okay, or magnet, uh, the, the the magnetic dipoles, like here it's a, a vector, that will be the north and that will be the south. Magnetic field always circulate, okay, from the north into the south. And then you can use your right hand again, okay? So in that case, it's I, B, F. So if the current is going this way, Okay, the magnetic field is going this way, so they are both in the same plane, then the force will be a deflecting force. That force will have to be perpendicular to the current, perpendicular to B. If the angle equals to zero, so if, so typical conceptual question for test three, I don't know, if the current and the field are parallel to each other, the force is zero. If they are anti-parallel, the force is zero. So the magnitude will be equals to the current, the length of the wire inside the magnetic field, the magnetic field, and that sign here of the angle between the current and the field. So today, we're going to see that it will be the same uh, idea if you have a moving charge, okay? Because imagine uh, you have the current here. You see the current here? What 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 a current is is a is a flow of positive charges right even though it's not true because it's actually electrons kind of moving in the opposite direction but everything happens you have positive charges here so a moving charge inside a magnetic field will be also acted upon by a force and we're going to use the right hand rule again so if a proton is moving this way are you are you watching me here? Watch me. So you have an electron, no, a proton, sorry, a proton moving this way, and you have a magnetic field going up. So the, the ground is north and here is south. So up, the force will be this way. Okay, so if you have a moving proton going that way, or moving positive charge moving this way, you have a magnetic field up, that will be the deflecting force. And that will be the principle behind a spectrometer or a mass spectrometer that you're going to use in your research lab um, in biology or chemistry. Okay?
So it's just a review. Um, what else did we see? So remember from last unit, when you have an electric field, okay, and here you see you can have, for example, a water molecule, like a water molecule is uh, polar. So there is a polarization. So you see that that uh, dipole, so this is called an electric dipole, so it could be a water molecule because negative will be the oxygen, that will be the hydrogen. It wants to align itself with the electric field. Okay, so we have seen that, and that will be the vector electric dipole. So that's why a microwave oven can heat up each time you have water inside, because water is a dipole, so it can be pushed and pulled by an electric field. Okay, so likewise here, we talked about that last time. If you have a loop of current, again, take your right hand. Okay, so if the current is going this way, okay, the thumb here will be the magnetic dipole. So it's a vector, it's just show you um, which way is north. So that will be north and that will be south, okay? So if you have a loop of current inside a magnetic field, so it, let's say this is north here and this is south, so you have a magnetic field going from left to right, your loop of current will rotate, will twist in such a way that it will align itself with a magnetic field. That will be the lowest level of energy. If you don't want that to happen, you will have to walk. <laughs> and then you have potential energy locked into the configuration. And if you let go, boom, it wants to go the other way. Is that clear? So uh, the torque will be equals to the number of loops, the magnetic field strength, uh, the current flowing inside the loop, the area of the loop, and the sign here the sign of the angle between the, that vector here, so the magnetic dipole and the magnetic field. Okay, is that clear? And uh, so MRI uh, is a nice application of that. So if we look at how MRI works here, you see we are uh, in the soft tissues of the human body. You have a lot of water, obviously, that's why it's soft. So a lot of hydrogen atoms. So you have all those little protons, okay? So these are the nuclei of the hydrogen atom, and they have a spin, okay? So they spin. And remember, the source for magnetism is moving charges. So those nuclei, everything happens like they spin on, on, on themselves, right? So they will behave like a small magnet like a magnetic dipole. In an MRI, if you, if you don't turn on the magnetic field, all those little uh, dipole or little magnets, you know, um, they will be randomly um, oriented. But if you apply a magnetic field in, in the MRI machine, so with the coil, all those little dipole wants to align themselves with the magnetic field. So here will be from top to bottom. And then you excite them with pulses of radio waves. Okay, so here they are happy, you know, minding their own business. And then of here you excite them, right? So they go to a higher state of energy. They are not going to stay there for too long. And then they relax back. And when they relax back, they burp out, like they throw up, right? They, they, they burp out uh, radio waves back, but from inside to outside. So that's how you can highlight the inside. Isn't that interesting? And it's not that um, it's, it, you don't have a good resolution. Uh, you see, you can see the soft tissues here but it's not as dangerous, not that dangerous, but you have less risk that uh, when you take a CAT scan or, or a PET scan. PET scan is gamma ray, so you don't want to have that many CAT scan, uh, PET scans, sorry. Okay, so I, I insist, okay, because you, I know you're gonna say, okay, okay, we get it, and then comes test three, oh, I didn't know. So I, I repeat. In any magnetic field, so that's my specialty, okay? I repeat a lot. A magnet so experiences equal... 
So this is a magnetic field. That will be your magnet or your loop of current. And the only thing that is confusing here is that that will be the north here and that will be the south. Usually the red is the north, but here that's the, the south, that's the north. And you see what you see here is a vector, it's called the magnetic dipole. So there will be a torque applied in such a way that dipole wants to align itself with the magnetic field. And that's when it's going to be happy because it will be at the lowest energy, potential energy. And opposite forces at its poles so that it tends to line up with the field. In other words, the field exerts a torque that tends to make the North Pole point in the direction of the field. In fact, that's how the direction of the field is defined. Okay. And that's how an electric motor works. Okay, so we talk about that. Electric dipole, very important in chemistry. And we stop, I don't know where we stop. We stop somewhere here. Okay, so you see here you have a magnetic field. Okay, so take your right hand again for the last time. Magnetic field goes into the screen. Okay, now alpha particle, what is an alpha particle? Is it positive, negative, or neutral? Positive, because alpha particle is the nucleus of a helium atom. So helium, how many protons? Two. So alpha particle is a nucleus of a helium atom that has lost its electrons. So it's like plus plus, okay? And neutrons, we don't care here. So magnetic field inside the screen, and then you see the, the, the direction of the particle going this way, okay? So magnetic field, so the force will be up, right? So it's gonna be deflected up. Okay, so it works exactly the same way as for the current. If a positive charge is moving this way, if the magnetic field is going that way, the force will be a deflecting force. And we're going to see that force here is always perpendicular to the velocity. So that force will be a centripetal force. Okay, I'm going to go back to this. What about a gamma particle? What's a gamma? Uh, it's neutral because it's a photon, okay? So it's a particle of light, except it has a lot of energy. So gamma will not be deflected. It will keep moving in a straight line. Now beta, what do you think beta is? Negative, it's actually an electron, okay? So in uh, nuclear uh, physics, if you go to nuclear medicine, for example, a beta particle is an electron and it will be deflected in the opposite direction. Okay, so in 1930s, they, they developed those, uh, I already show you a video about that, those uh, bubble chamber or, or, or cloud chamber, where you can visualize particles moving, for example, from space, okay? You always have particles coming from space, even though we have a magnetic field to protect us, every second is going through your brain right now, right? So if you have a, a bubble chamber, for example, let's see if I have a picture here. So you have a bubble chamber. So some kind of liquid ready to turn into gas, and you have a particle coming through that liquid. It's gonna leave a, a trace, a track, a trail. And if in addition to that, you, you have a magnetic field, it will curve the particle it will make it go into a circle. The particle wants to circle around the magnetic field. Yes, we'll talk about that, but magnet, uh, uh, a moving particle inside a magnetic field will be deflected and it wants to circle out around the magnetic field. So that's why here, that will be the type of traces that you will get. You see, if it's turned in one direction, it will be positive. If it's turned in the other direction, it will be negative. 
and if it doesn't turn at all, that means it's neutral. Okay, so it could be a photon, for example, or it could be a neutron. Okay, so before I keep going, I just want to refresh your memory from uh, physics one. I hope you didn't forget uh, everything. So let's say you have a car, so you're making a turn. Okay, so you have a car here. On the, on the turn, so this is your car. So I'm looking at the car from above, okay? So the car has a velocity, so it's moving, okay? So velocity V. So the car wants to keep going in a straight line at a constant speed, but that will be bad, okay? Because you go in into, I don't know where. So you want to have a force that push the car in, right? So where does that force comes from? Friction, very good. Remember from last semester, right? So it means um, I want to keep going in a straight line at a constant speed. No, you don't. Okay. So that means there is a force here pulling you in. Now that force is perpendicular to the velocity. Okay. So if it's perpendicular, okay, and it's not along the velocity, that means it cannot change the velocity. You are not going to go faster or slower because there is no along the velocity. It cannot pull in this direction or pull in the other direction. But what's what's the job of that force? Okay, so it make it. What is it doing to the car? Make it change direction. Make it turn. Okay, I want to keep going. Should I not go? No, you can't. Okay, so that force is called a centripetal force and it keeps the car on, on the turn. If the car is too heavy, like a truck, and uh, if there is not enough friction, it will be easier to go off, off tangent. If you are going too fast, then also easy to go off tangent because there won't be enough force to pull you in. Okay, so you can always find the radius here, R. Okay, so in that case, that centripetal force is provided by the friction. Okay, so in that case, that will be the friction providing the centripetal force. And what's the equation for a centripetal force is mv squared over r. So a centripetal force is always provided by something. Here it's provided by the friction. So it will be... Uh, Static friction times the normal. So it's the friction push pulling toward the center. And in that case, there is a change in direction, but, but there is no work done. Okay, it doesn't go faster, it doesn't go slower. Is that clear? Okay. Uh, last example, if you have the, the earth here. Okay. And it's a, it's a flat earth, I don't know. Oh, that's not, not great, but it's fine. Okay, and here you have the moon. So this is the moon. And what does the moon wants to do? It wants to keep going. It's a straight line at a constant speed, but, 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 but there is gravity exactly. No, you don't. So there is a force here pulling in here. So that's the force due to gravity. And you see, the force is perpendicular to the velocity. So each time a force is perpendicular to a velocity, it means it can make the, the, the object change direction, but it cannot make it slow down or speed up. It cannot do work on it. It cannot um, change its kinetic energy. So the speed will stay the same. Is that clear? So likewise, in that case, it's going to be the force of gravity. So the mass of the Earth, the mass of the Moon divided by the distance square will be equals to the mass of the Moon, the speed square divided by R. Okay, so that will be a centripetal force. Is that clear? Okay, so likewise, if you have a particle inside a magnetic field, it will be, it will be, 
if you have a charge moving in this direction and you have a magnetic field moving in this direction, you will have a force. The force will be perpendicular to the velocity and that force will be a centripetal force. Okay, so I will show you an app uh, very soon, but that's the idea. So here you have a magnetic field into the screen. Um, so one, and then you have two particles, three particles, one, two, three. Okay, we, we're gonna do this way. So you have a particle, like a positive particle co coming this way. What are these dots meaning? Where is the magnetic field? In the screen or uh, toward you or in the screen? Very good, right? Because you see the, actually should be like this, right? You see the dot here, that will be the cross. If it's in the screen, you see the cross. So where is the force? So you take your right hand, okay? So you see it's moving this way. The magnetic field is toward you. So the force is down. And it's gonna be a force perpendicular to the velocity. So it means once the particle goes inside the magnetic field, it will be deflected. It's gonna make a circle, right? It's gonna go and circle out the magnetic field. And now I will show you an app, but in that case, you see the circle gets smaller and smaller and smaller because it's losing energy because it's bumping into the liquid here. So the velocity is going to decrease. So that's why it doesn't make that big circle at the end. But my question is, particle two, is it a positive or, or, or negative particle? Look, look at this one. So to make a circle like this, at that point, the force has to be up or down. You see here, the particle enter is gonna go this way. Uh, the force, the velocity is this way for a positive charge. Magnetic field is toward you, so the force is this way. That's the force, right? So what's gonna happen? I want to go in a straight line. No, you can't. So it's gonna go a circle like this. Okay, so it's gonna circle out the magnetic field. So that means this particle is positive. If you, if you look at this one, if this one is positive, this one will be negative. What about this one? Neutral, very good, okay? So the force will tell you which way it wants to curve. My point for you to understand is that a magnetic field cannot accelerate a charge, cannot decelerate a charge. It will make it curve. That's the point to remember. So uh, it will make it go around the magnetic field. I don't know if you have uh, here. See, a positive charge wants to go around the magnetic field. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you an app, which is easier to understand. Uh, if the app wants to work, I don't know what, why, I, I still don't understand. I have to do it three times. Come on. Ah, she, I, I have no idea why it does that. Okay. 
okay, let's try to do this one. Okay, so uh, we're gonna take a positive charge and uh, that will be the velocity. So it's a positive charge and you have a magnetic field. The magnetic field is going which way? Toward you or away? Away, so in the screen. Okay, so let me take a guess which way it's gonna curve. So the, the velocity is up, right? Do you agree? And magnetic field is where? In the screen or toward you? You see crosses, right? If you see crosses, like this is in the screen. You see the cross, you see the cross. Magnetic field is a vector. So this way, this way. So where is the force? To the left. So it's gonna be deflected to the left. So now imagine this is the magnetic field into the screen. So that means you have a magnetic field coming from the north somewhere into the screen here. Do you all you agree with that? The, the velocity is this way, magnetic field is that way, so the force should be to the left. Let's see if it works. Do you see that? So um, when it's there, it's going to accelerate, okay? Because uh, it's, uh, it's acted upon by an electric field here somewhere, so it's going to accelerate here. And then it's going to be deflected. Now, what do you think is going to happen if I increase the velocity? So it has more momentum, right? It will go further, but will still uh, turn left. Does it make sense? Why does it go further? But it's because if you have a Ferrari, you know, at 100 miles per hour, it's going to be harder for it to make a turn. Uh, compared to a slow bike, for example. So let's see if it is true. If I increase the speed now, let's see. I increase the radius of my circle. So here it's a semi-circle because after it leaves the magnetic field, but if I stay inside, it will keep going around and around and around and around. Is that clear? Are you with me? What if we change the... What if we still change? So it's positive, that's the speed. And uh, what else? Oh, I can change the magnetic field. For if I make it very strong, what's going to happen? It's going to pull even more. So the force will increase. So the radius will be small. Let's see. Doom. See that? What about if I put a negative, negative? Which way is gonna, so negative, you do like the same thing here, there. So if it's positive, it's to the left, because it's negative, the force will be to the right. So if it's negative, you take your finger here and you do like me, you, you go all the way around. Or, or if you don't want to break your finger, it's because I'm double jointed, that's why I can <laughs> It's hard to do, right? Um, you can take your left hand as well. So let's see. Whoops. Do you see how it's being deflected? Is that clear? So we're going to see how, how it's going to be used. So why, why is uh, such a big deal? Because you, you can also find the mass of the particle by looking by how much is being deflected. So if you have a small radius, of course, it's going to be a smaller particle. If it's a large radius, it's going to be a larger particle. So by measuring the radius, you can identify the particle. You with me? Okay, so if you have a heavy truck, it's going to be harder to make the turn. So they were able to see that an electron was going this way, and all of a sudden, they see exactly the same thing, so the same mass, so a particle with the same mass of an electron, but it was deflected in the opposite direction. So what do you think it means? Same magnetic field, same velocity, same mass, so a particle with same mass as the electron, but it was deflected in the opposite direction. So what they did uh, discover, that was in 1932. 
So an electron, is it uh, negative or positive? Negative. And now you have a particle exactly like the electron, the same mass, but it's deflected in the opposite direction. So that particle will be positive. It's an anti-electron. Like you have anti-matter, it's not science fiction. You do have anti-matter, and an anti-electron is called a positron. And well, when do we use positron? When you are going to do a PET scan. PET scan, you're going to produce positron inside your body. The, the positron inside your body will combine with electrons inside your body because electrons are everywhere. They're going to annihilate each other. They're going to destroy each other because matter and antimatter destroy each other. And you have a burst of energy inside out that will be gamma rays coming from inside out and you will be highlighted by gamma rays. So that will be a very good resolution, but not a good idea to do too many of them. PET scan. So that will be a PET scan. So which, which way do you think is going to be deflected? It's coming to the right. Magnetic field is in or, or towards you? In two, so it will be deflected up, right? So it's going to make like a circle. Half, half of a circle. Okay. I, I should I should have keep it this oh oh now it's nice come on you see if you have a positive a positive charge inside a magnetic field but it was already moving to the height so it will keep that inertia it will keep that momentum but because there is a magnetic field it will circle around the magnetic field so when it gets to magnetic field it's all about curling around okay so remember that's how if you have a magnetic field here from from the earth you see what's going to happen? The proton will circle out around the magnetic field lines from the Earth, so it does not reach us. Okay? By doing it, it's going to accelerate. Okay? So because here it's going to be stronger than there, so it's going to slow down and then reverse its direction. And because it's going into a circle, so it's an acceleration, it's going to display those beautiful colors that you see from space. Isn't that interesting? So a positive charge, only if it's moving, it's going to circle out a magnetic field line. So it's going to go around. And uh, I, will, I will get to, to the math in a moment, but the math is easier, right? If you look at the math, the equation for the magnetic force acting on the moving charge, there has to be a charge. So if I try to trick you for test number three, if it's a neutron, there is no magnetic field. Uh, there is no magnetic force. It has to be moving. If a proton is not moving inside a magnetic field, it will not be acted upon by a force. If it's inside an electric field, yes, but inside a magnetic field, no. It has to be moving. You see, you have a velocity here. So QVB. So instead of having um, I, B, F, you have V, B, F. So you replace here, your thumb will be the velocity of the charge, the positive charge, okay? And that will be, again, the angle between the charge and the field. Is that clear? So if the angle equals to zero, so it means if this is the field, and this is the moving charge, they are parallel to each other, the field and the velocity, there is no force. If they are anti-parallel, so if the, the magnetic field is this way and the charge is moving that way, there is no force. You need to have an angle for that to happen. Okay? 
So here, you see you have the magnetic field in the screen, yes? Okay, so that means V to the, this way, I don't know what is for, for you, will be to the left. V is inside the screen, so that will be F. And if you have a magnetic field all over this space here, so inside the screen, and the charge is not losing energy, so it's going at the same velocity, so it will keep going into a circle forever, ever after. If you have a negative charge, it's going to circle in the opposite direction. Is that clear? Okay, so that's why I've made a summary to um, summarize, of course. So again, north and south. So you have a magnetic field from north to south. Now you have a moving charge. It's positive. So it will be acted upon by a force. Can that force make it go faster? No. Can, I, can it make it slower? No, never. A magnetic field, uh, a magnetic force will deflect. It will curve because the force is perpendicular to the velocity. So it's like a centripetal force. Is that clear? But if you have an electric field, like here you have a capacitor, so electric field goes from plus to minus. So it wants to keep going straight like that at a constant speed. No, you can't because you have a force here. So you're going to have like a projectile motion. So a charge in an electric field, can it accelerate? Yes, F equals QE. An electric field will accelerate a charge. A magnetic field will deflect the charge. Is that clear? Okay, so that's what you see here. Okay, so before getting to the math, I have one more app to show you. Um, I don't know how to do, okay, here. If it wants to open. Okay. So first, I'm going to take no electric field. So I'm going to put the electric field zero. OK, so it has a velocity along the x axis. So of course, because of inertia, it wants to keep going. It's straight line at a constant speed. What you see here is what is um, the electric down here is the uh, no i'm not going to make it what is that it's the electric field so you have a positive charge here and you have an electric field this way so remember the electric force is proportional it's just um, uh, proportional to the electric field so where, which way is the force it's inside an electric field, F equals QE, so the force is down, okay? Remember, don't forget, don't erase your memory, okay? That was just like a few weeks ago. So an electric field will accelerate a charge. So think about it, right? It's typical conceptual question, what's going to happen? It wants to keep going the straight line at a constant speed, but... Here, you have a force pulling down. So remember last semester, what happened if you throw something in the air? It wants to keep going a straight line at a constant speed, but at the same time, there is gravity pulling down. So what's going to happen? It's up. Uh, what's going to happen? No. What's going to happen? It keep going in a straight line, but at the same time, it's falling because you have gravity pulling it down. So along this direction, it's accelerating. Yes? Okay, don't forget everything. Well, that will be a good uh, question for test three because everyone is on, in another world right now. Okay, so what do you think is gonna happen? Yes, it's gonna make a projectile motion. 
Look. So what's happening? There is a force pulling down, but there is there is also inertia. So it wants to keep going straight at a constant speed, but it's accelerating down. Do you agree? I I can do it also if it's uh don't 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 erase your memory, please, 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 please. Don't forget. I'm gonna take a magnetic field equals to zero. Get the electric field, okay, I'm going to take to minus, so it's going to be down. And now I'm taking no velocity. So there is no velocity to start with. So what's going to happen in that case? Which way is going to go? So forget about this, there is no velocity. And the electric field is down. So what's going to happen to the charge? It's going to go down. And it's going to what? Go move it at a constant speed or it's going to accelerate? It's going to accelerate. Okay, great. Test three, perfect. Perfect question. You won't be able to find it on chat uh, GPT. Okay, so I'm sure of that. So this is perfect. Okay, so what else? So that's for the electric field. An electric field accelerates, even though it will keep the initial momentum, but at the same time, it has to accelerate. What now if I have a, an electric field? Um, I remove the electric field, so I'm going to put that to zero. And uh, now this is zero. And now the magnetic field is negative 0 0.5. Okay. So now um, predict what's going to happen. So the that's false. Okay, magnetic field is going toward you in the screen. In the screen. So the force is up. up. Okay. And because it's a magnetic field, will the charge accelerate? No. It will. It's going to go around. Okay, it will, it will circle out the magnetic field line going into the screen. Ready? Look at that. Isn't that cute? Uh, there is no loss in energy, okay? And uh, because there is no loss in energy, it's going to go at the same speed. And uh, it's, it's making a circle. So we can find the period. How long does it take to complete the circle? We can find the frequency. How many circles it's completing per second, okay? If you increase, if you increase the speed, what's going to happen? The circle will increase. Very good. Okay, it's like a Ferrari uh, going really fast. Make, when it's going to turn, it's going to be large circle. If you increase the mass, also it's going to be large circle because it has so much inertia. It's hard to turn. Is, isn't that great? Huh? So that's what's happening. So imagine the. When that happens, it means that the charge wants to go around the magnetic field line. Okay? Now, if you have both, it's going to be something weird, right? It's not going to be a circle because it's, it's accelerating up, but at the same time, it's going around the magnetic field, so it's doing two things at the same time. Now, there is something very special where you can have an electric field and a magnetic field and in such a way that they're going to cancel each other. The force up will be canceled by the force down. So in that case, what's going to happen to the particle? If you have up equals down, if you have an electric field up, for example, and a magnetic field force down, what's going to happen to the particle? It goes straight, very good. So if you are um, working in a lab, you, are, you have something called a mass spectrometer, and you have to use what is called a velocity selector. Okay, so we're going to see how it's used. But in that case, I want to show you, I tried. Um, so if the electric field is negative 5, so let's make it negative 5. Okay, and the magnetic field is minus. Okay, so, and the, okay, okay, let's see if it works. Where, where is the electric force, down or up? 
The electric force. Down. Where is the magnetic force? So the, the velocity is this way, magnetic field is in the screen. Where is the force? Up. And they are in such a way, the, the magnetic field, the electric field have such um, numbers, then up will be equals to down. So let's see if it works. You see, it's moving in a straight line. And that will be true only for a given velocity. Okay, so that's what we call the velocity selector. So for test three, I will, uh, I think I, I will um, privilege conceptual question. Um, So in that case, I don't know how to do that. So anyway, in in that case, ah, I don't know how I did it, but I did it. Okay. So in that case, you have magnetic up. You have electric down. Okay. So you have the magnetic force equals the electric force. The magnetic force is QVB, okay? So the charge times the velocity times the magnetic field. The electric field is QE. You can cross out the charge. And that way you have the velocity is the ratio between E and B. So that means if you have, if you want to select a velocity, you want to, to, to use that ratio between electric field and magnetic field. It's called the velocity selector. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll go back to that. Is that clear? If you want, after the class, you can come to see me and I will run that again. So here, again, the magnetic field is where? Toward you or in the screen? In the screen. So for example, if you look at number one, Velocity is going this way. Magnetic field is in the screen. So the force here is in this direction. Do you agree? So this is called a centripetal force. It's perpendicular to velocity, to the velocity. It cannot speed up the charge and make it go around in a circle. And it will circle around the magnetic field lines. Is that clear? So a little bit of algebra. So centripetal force equals mv squared over r. That will be the magnetic force, qvb. We already have seen that on Tuesday. And you can isolate the radius r. r equals mv over qb. Does it make sense? Yes, it does. Because you see, larger is the particle or the isotope. It doesn't have to be a proton. It could be a positively charged uh, ion. For example, larger is your isotope, larger will be the radius because it has more inertia, so it's harder to make it turn. Larger is the velocity, harder is to make it turn, okay, because it will go very fast. Like if you go really fast on the highway, if you try to make a turn, off tangent you go. Larger is the magnetic field, um, then you increase the motivation to be deflected. If you have a large magnetic field, you're going to turn more, right? The radius will be smaller. Does it make sense? And same thing, if you increase the charge, the radius will be smaller. So it's inversely proportional to B and proportional to the mass and to the velocity. Yes. No? Someone is stretching. OK. Um, OK. More math here, so that will be the radius here. Um, you can find the period, so the period will be the time it takes to go around. And when you do the period, so the, the math is not very hard, the period is a time, so it will be the speed, um, the distance divided by the speed. So distance is two pi r, so that will be the speed. You get that equation here. 
and you see that the period, the time it takes to go wrong, what is it that is missing here? So if I ask you a conceptual question, the, the period, the time it takes to complete a circle for a positive charge inside the magnetic field, it does depend on the mass, check. It does depend on B, check. It does depend on Q, check. Oh! What is it that does not depend on? The velocity. No matter what the velocity is, the time to go around will be the same, which is not very intuitive. Okay, so let's try to do this one. Okay, so help each other. So if you go back to my slide here, you see the force. The force is QVB. This angle is the, uh, the angle between V and B. So instead of having a current here, you have the V. So QVB, and then you have a sign, but usually it's gonna be perpendicular, so you don't have to worry about the sign. So once you understand the concept, it's um, everything else is just smart. Um, I'm lost. Okay, find the radius. So I'm gonna put R question mark. So here you have the speed, okay. And the earth magnetic field, so the earth magnetic field is, remember, 0 0.5 Gauss, which is 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative 4 Tesla. Okay, so it means you have a particle here, it's an electron. Let's say the electron is moving this way. And let's say the magnetic field of the earth is going into the screen here. So which way is going to be deflected? Remember, electron will be opposite. Left. Yes, the left, the left, right? So it's going to be V up, B inside. So it's going to be uh, V, B, the right, this way. This way, is that right? Okay. Right, so you use your right hand, right hands, good, good for lefty. And so it's gonna circle around like this. Okay, and the radius will be from here to there. Okay, so you go back to the slide and you see that the radius equals mv over qb. How do I know that, where it comes from? Because the centripetal force here is equals to mv squared over r, and in that case is provided by the magnetic force QVB. And you can shake it a little bit, and that's what you find here. You can isolate r, m, v over QB. So you don't have to memorize, you can find it uh, with your equation sheet, you know that that's a centripetal force. Okay, so can we do it? Yes, we can. <laughs> so mass, velocity, Q and B. So you all have your equation sheet, so you can look up for the uh, mass of an electron. Mass, it's an electron, right? So the mass of an electron is nine, 0.11 times 10 to the negative 31. And then you have the speed, so two times 10 to the seven. You see it's a very large speed, okay? Three times 10 to the eight is the speed of flight. The charge of an electron is what? 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. And the magnetic field is 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative four. So what do you get? 2.3, yes. OK, 
okay? Be careful with the scientific notation, okay? Because you have to use parentheses here. You go enter, you divide by open the parentheses, enter, and then you divide by this and, and enter again. Any question? Uh, no, 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 no. Did I put a 0 0.50? No, oh, this is Gauss. It's a G. Because that's the magnetic field of the Earth, and one Gauss is a subunit. It's a small unit. It's 10 to the negative 4 uh, Tesla. Magnetic field of a magnet that you play with is about 0 0.1 Tesla. So it's always taking over the magnetic field of the Earth. Okay, so now what do you think is going to happen if you increase the magnetic field by a lot? So you use an electromagnet. Do you expect the radius to decrease or increase? Decrease. Do you see? It's inversely proportional to B. It's very important to be able to do those kind of uh, questions here, okay, for MCAT. You see? Inversely, inversely. So B goes up, R goes down, goes down when this one goes up. Okay, so let's do the same thing. R equals 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st. And then you have the speed, 2 times 10 to the 7. And then you have 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. And now you have 10. So the radius equals 2. So 1.1 times 10 to the negative 5 meters. OK, you are biology major. You should be able to convert that to micrometers. So you divide by 10 to the negative 6. OK, so you want to convert to micrometer. Micro means 10 to the negative 6. So you divide this by e to the minus 6 to convert to micro, and you get 11 micrometers, OK? So in biology, you need to know how to convert, right? Go from one unit to the other one. Is that clear? So imagine, again, the magnetic field is going into the screen. So it's like you have a two coil, like you have in a machine, like a MRI. Magnetic field goes into, and that positive charge is going to start circling around. Any question? The math is not hard. It's the concept. Oh boy, the concept. Not, not that easy. Can you all pay attention to here? Amanda, you're with us? Right. So let's see which one will make sense. So first of all, you have negative and positive, yes? So do you expect them to, to spin in the same direction? <coughs> let's try to, like, you know, when you are taking the SAT, you eliminate. Can negative and positive circle in the same direction? No, when, when you have the same magnetic field, they have to circle in opposite direction, right? So this one you can eliminate, agree? This one you can eliminate, agree? Uh, this one, no. This one you can eliminate, agree? Okay, so it's between B and C. And then which one has the larger mass, the proton or the electron? Proton, okay, 2,000 times more massive. So which one you expect to make a large circle, the proton or the electron? The proton, because it has more inertia. It's like a truck, right, making a turn. It's, it's not going to be easy as a bike. If you have a bike, it's easy. So this, this one will make sense, right? So let's verify. Look at the top here, look here, you see? 
velocity is this way, magnetic field is in the screen, so the force is down. So that's why it's going to go around. Okay? And the electron will circle in the opposite direction. So why, why is it uh, so useful for uh, biologists and chemists? Because we can use that okay, to measure the mass of isotopes. So for example, uh, you, you know, all, all the isotopes, they have the same numbers, the same number of isotopes have the same number of protons, very good, but not the same number of neutrons, okay? Not the same number of neutrons, so that means they do not have the same mass. They have the same atomic uh, number, but not the same mass number, okay? So sometimes you want to find the masses of isotope. And look what you do. So the one with the largest mass, okay, will describe a larger circle. The one with the smaller mass, the isotope with the smaller mass, will describe a, cir a circle, a smaller circle, a, a smaller R, okay? And then you can move the detector and you can collect this one, okay? And, and when you hear a beep, so you move your detector until you hear a beep. You see here, you're gonna hear a beep, beep, beep. So you can find the mass of that isotope. Isn't that cool? So here is the math, which is surprisingly very easy. It's just algebra 101. So first you see your uh, ion. So that will be your isotope. So usually you get to them uh, turn into vapor, for example, and you charge them. So now they are uh, positively charged. You accelerate them through a potential. So, do you remember? So you apply a potential. So this is plus, this is minus. So they will speed up, okay? So and that means, remember from last uh, unit, that means that QV, Okay, QV will be the potential energy that will be turned into kinetic energy. We have done a lot of problems like this, right? QV, the potential energy, or potential energy turned into kinetic energy. Except here it says U, it should be like, oh, it's not to be confused with the, with the speed. So you have this equation here, so you have the velocity there. In addition to that, you have this equation here for the radius. So you're gonna plug V inside that equation and that's what you're gonna get. Look at this, okay? So it means if you know the distance here of the detector, so R is known, you have your potential, you know B, you can find the mass. So that's what we call the mass spectrometer. And it's really not hard to understand, okay? So it means the isotope that will be the heaviest is gonna be curved, but farther away. Isotope with less mass will be curved closer to uh, uh, the starting point. Is that clear? So the math is not hard. You see the mass of the isotope will be the charge that you put on the isotope. Uh, the radius, so how far is the detector from here? Uh, that will be the potential, the voltage, that's the voltage, and B square. So what you do, what you do, you will change B, you will change the magnitude of B because it's an electromagnet until you hear a beep in your detector, and then you can find the mass. Isn't that uh, interesting? So you change B until you hear a beep in your detector, so then you can find the mass. So this is called a mass spectrometer. Okay, you can use the same technique to count the number of isotopes, okay? So depending on B, okay, so you can, you can have your detector here, you're gonna count how many of them, okay, 20, and here it's gonna be not 20, that's the isotope 20. And then that will be isotope 21, isotope 22. So you can use a mass spectrometer to count 
how many isotopes you have. And you can use the same technique to separate isotope. So the best example I can think of, because I was teaching that back then, um, is uh, your uranium enrichment. So to make an atomic bomb back then, during uh, World War II, okay, you had what is called the Manhattan Project. So they were working on the atomic bomb. But to make an atomic bomb, you only use the isotope uranium-235. You cannot use uranium-238. But if you take a piece of uranium, everything is mixed together, of course, right? And you cannot use chemistry to split them apart, okay? Chemistry will be the chemical reaction for uranium-235 or uranium-238 will be the same. So you cannot use chemistry. You have to use a different way. In a piece of uranium, you have about 1% uranium-235, only 1%. So you need to enrich uranium. So what they used to do, using uh, such a uh, same principle here, except at the time it was called a calutron, okay, because it was developed at Caltech, I think, or University of California. No, I think it was Caltech. I have to check this out. So anyway, you see here, you, 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 make, you have uranium, you vaporize uranium, you're gonna have uranium-235, uranium-238. Which one is the heaviest? 238. So we, which one will make a larger circle? 238. And then here you have your detector and you, you, can, you can collect your uranium-235. When you have enough uranium-235, that's called the critical mass, that's when you can, you can make the bomb. And that was the whole story of the Manhattan Project. You, you know, maybe they talk about it in Oppenheimer, the, the movie. The, the whole story was to be able to enrich uranium enough to get the critical mass before, before the Nazi. Because on, on the other side, they were trying also to do the same thing, to, to have enough uranium-235. But you didn't get it. OK. OK, so let's try number one. I forgot what number one is about. OK, let's try number one. So in that case, we're going to use that principle to find the mass. Remember, I told you, you can find masses of isotopes. OK, so you change the magnetic field until you hear a beep in your detector. OK, so when that happens, you have a magnetic field of A Tesla. So you hear beep, 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 beep. So you know that you have a particle, and then you can find the mass because you have the radius. OK, so you have the radius here. You have your detector, you have your magnetic field, and you want to find the mass. And of course, you want to make sure to use your book, you know, Johnson and Kutner. Okay, so the mass is question mark, a single elementary charge. What is this? You are in chemistry, right? What is a single elementary charge? What's the what's a, what's the smallest charge that you can have? It's it's a proton or an electron, right? They have the same charge. You you cannot cut that in two or three. So that element, what we say when we say single elementary charge, that means it's the charge of a proton or an electron. So it's E. Okay. So. The charge is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 Coulomb. And here you have the radius. So that means R equals 0 0.35. Okay, so you, you read along and you translate everything. Uh, what is the speed of flight? The speed of flight is 3 times 10 to the 8. So the speed is 0 0.9 times 10 to the 8 
times the speed of light. Okay, the magnetic field is 8 Tesla. And what is M? So you go back to the slide and you look for the equation. So it doesn't talk about potential uh, difference, the voltage. So I can use the equation with R. Okay, so you go back. Yeah, for example, and you don't don't have to memorize it. You see, R is proportional to M, proportional to the speed, inversely proportional to Q, inversely proportional to B. There is two quantity on the top, two quantity at the bottom. Okay, so R equals M V over Q B. Okay, so now you can plug everything in. So zero point thirty five over 1 equals the mass is unknown the speed is 90 percent that's 90 percent of the speed of light over the charge 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 and times the magnetic field is uh, 8 And you, are, you want to isolate M. Okay, so a little bit of algebra. You isolate the top. So you do 0 0.35 times 1.6 and 10 to negative 9 times 8, enter. And then you divide by 0 0.9 times 3 times 10 to the 8, enter. Okay, so you do cross, cross, multiply, divide. You get that part here, so you divide by 0 0.9 times 3 times 10 to the 8. Are you leaving already? Don't leave. So what did you find for the mass? 1.1? Okay, so that does not ring a bell. Ring, no, no, that's not a good song. <laughs> so 1.7 times 10 to the negative 27. Look your equation sheet, that will be. It's the mass of a electron is uh, nine point one times ten to negative thirty first. That's a proton. Okay, it doesn't mean uh, it, it means it's it means but it means it's a proton. Yes, it's it's a proton. <laughs> it's a proton. It doesn't have to be a proton, but it's a proton. Mm -hmm. Is that clear? So when you have an isotope, usually you you char, I mean you you you, t you take electrons away so they become positively charged. So it didn't have to be a proton, but in that case, look at the mass; it has to be a proton. Okay, um, I had like a short video, except I I forgot where it comes from. So forgive me. Welcome to the demo prep room. We're sitting It's a demo. Uh, he's a professor, but I forgot uh, from where. So you're going to have a beam of electron, like a vac in, inside a vacuum tube. Okay, so except it's not a tube here. It's like it's round. And here you're going to have two coils, like uh, in MRI. So it will apply it will be applied a magnetic field. And look, can you have a good the dark, uh, resolution? We're going to can show you see? that a charged particle beam does indeed go in a circle so, when you put it in a uniform magnetic, magnetic field. field. So, so this is an evacuated glass wall, and there's an electron gun in it. 
An electron gun really just means a heated metal filament that's easy to draw electrons off of. Near the gun that you can now see glowing orange is a little metal plate that we put at a large positive potential. So that sucks the electrons up to a few hundred volts at the plate. The plate has a hole in it so that some of the electrons keep going in the form of beam. So you see, this is the beam of electron. This is the cathode and this is the anode. So you apply a voltage between the cathode and the anode. Between them, the electron will accelerate because you have an electric field from plus to minus. So electron wants to go against the electric field. And then once it passes the anode, it will keep going in a straight line here at a constant speed before it hits the, the wall here. Is that clear? So it's a beam of electron. That continues on until it hits the glass. glass. Now you're seeing you're the seeing beam because, because it's exciting, exciting a little bit of gas inside. 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 So you're seeing, you're seeing white and white gas, gas. So it's there, but the beam is shooting, shooting, shooting for the gas. For the gas. So you're, so you're seeing, seeing the electron, electron beam indirectly. indirectly. Now we know, now we know that, that if we bring a magnet light, it'll reflect the beam. So here's my north-south bar magnet. Turn up one pole, pushes it up. Another pole, Another pole shoots it shoots down. down. If I bring, if I bring it, in, it in, these, these kinds of things, things, things will go all crazy, crazy patterns, patterns, patterns of beam. Of beam. Isn't that crazy? You see, you have a moving particle. That particle is this charge, so you can deflect it with a magnetic field. You cannot accelerate it. Can you bring in a strong, strong concentrated magnetic, magnetic field? field. But what we're here, what to, we're here do to do is to create, to create a uniform, uniform field. field. That's what That's these two big, big coils are. are. So this is a large, large coil of wire, wire on one side, one side of the wall, wall, large coil on the other side. side. So if you put them together, put them together you, can you can make a reasonably, reasonably uniform, uniform magnetic field, field on the inside. On side. So, so this power supply, power supply increase, increase the current in these coils, coils, and we'll and see what so pattern you apply a magnetic the field. electron beam is You see how it's curved? More and more. And right now it looks right like now, it wants to make a circle, but the radius, the radius is too big. big. It doesn't, doesn't fit in the fit ball. In the bowl. So if I keep turning keep it up, turning more and more current, 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 bigger and bigger and bigger, 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 bigger field, eventually, eventually there it is. There it, is. it makes it a makes circle. You see, it's called a cyclotron. So from here to there, you're going to have the radius, right? And the radius depends on the mass, the charge, the field, and the velocity. Perfect, Perfect circular, circular motion. motion. Going right, going right back, back to where it started. So the electron is going into a circle. Oh, sorry. And if I turn, turn the magnetic, magnetic field back field down, down, back down to zero, 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 straight again. Straight again. So, there's, so there's direct, direct visualization, visualization of a circular, of a circular motion motion charge, charge in the magnetic field. Okay, so a charge will move in a circle if, um, if it's inside the magnetic field. And what he did here, um, Here, do you remember when we used a um, capacitor between the two plates? So this is not a capacitor, but when we, we had a capacitor here, okay? If you have two plates here, between the plates, you're gonna have a uniform electric field. Do you remember that? And if you place a charge here, it's gonna accelerate because that will be acted by an electric force. Likewise, what he used here, it's called, uh, Helmholtz coil. So if you have two coils like this, right? It's like a MRI. That's what you have in an MRI when you shove someone inside. If you have two coils here, okay, you can generate a uniform magnetic field in between because you have two loops. So you have magnetic field going this way. This one is going to also make the ma same magnetic field going that way. They will reinforce each other. I, actually, I lied. Look, look, the loop is going this way, right? The loop going into the screen, and that will be your magnetic field. Is that clear? So if you have such configuration, and of course, the loop have to be exactly the same, and they have the same number of turns, and the distance between them has to be equal to the radius, then we have a beautiful way to provide a uniform magnetic field. Okay, so that's just the parenthesis. Don't have to worry about it too much. So let's go back, but that's how MRI works with the magnet. Okay, so talk to each other, help each other. What do you think? Uh, are these positive charge or negative charge? So start with positive. If it was positive, 
which way it should be deflected to? Huh? So the force is this way, magnetic field is that way. Up. Is it going up? No. So it has to be a negative charge. Okay, so if I go back a little bit here, you see, when you have a charge particle entering a magnetic field, it will be deflected in one direction if the charge is negative, the other direction if the charge is positive. So here you have two particles. If the charge is positive, it will circle in this direction. So you have a circular motion. If it's negative, you have a motion in the, in the other direction. Is that clear? And that will be the equation for the radius. Okay, so let's go back to here. Okay, let's do this one. So you can uh, pick, okay, you can look at these equations here. For the mass spectrometer, you can use, I guess you can use this equation here. The mass, that will be the charge, the radius square, that will be your voltage that you apply to accelerate, okay, to get to the speed that you want, kinetic speed, kinetic energy equals the potential energy. So write that down, you can use that equation here. Okay, so don't stare. I see people staring. Don't stare. So you have the equation M, the mass equals Q R square. That will be your voltage, the voltage that you apply B square. It's a voltage. So this is a voltage. The voltage is in volt. This is in the. This is a two. Thank you. It's a. It's a two. Okay. So where does that comes from? Because the kinetic energy of a charged particle inside the potential will be Q uh, times the potential. So you can use that equation. Okay, so let's see, you have the magnetic field here, which is milli. So 10 to the negative three Tesla. You have the potential 150 volt. Uh, charge is E. So the charge is E, which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 Coulomb. Uh, you have the radius. 0 0.071 meters. Uh, what is its mass? So that will be the technique you use to find the mass of an isotope. Okay, are you all doing it? The mass will be equals to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. And then here, the radius square, so 0 0.071 square over, here you have a 2, and then you have a 150. Oh, and then you have B square, forgot B square. So 20 times 10 to the negative 3 square. There is a B square here. So what do you get? <clears throat> Times 10 to the negative? 27. So again, it's a, it's a proton. So that will be the technique to find the mass of an isotope. Okay? 
So the way it works, you apply a voltage. Okay, so for example, here you have plus, you have a proton here, so it will accelerate between plus and minus. Usually it's a gas here, and then it's gonna speed up. Okay, and then it will get inside the magnetic field and it will be deflected. Anyone has worked already with a mass spectrometer? No? So the way it's usually done, it goes, it goes in three steps. First, you accelerate the isotope. Okay, so here you have the anode and here you have the cathode. So this one are positively charged, so they're gonna accelerate, but here you have a hole. So you're gonna miss the, um, the they are not going to crash into the plate. Some of them will make it through the hole. So now they have kinetic energy. Their kinetic energy will be equals to QV. Okay, so that's the voltage applied. That will be the charge. I'm reviewing again and again and again. And then they go through a velocity selector. So you're going to have an electric force pulling up, magnetic force pulling down. Okay, so you select the velocity that you want. And then they go inside that make magnetic field and they will be deflected. So you can separate them or you can find their mass. Is that clear? So here you have a YouTube video. I think I will use that. I don't know if I use that for test number three or if I use it for a pop quiz, but it goes uh, through all the steps in that video. I think for next pop quiz, I will use that. So you see here, you have a beam of electron. You accelerate them. It's going to go through the hole, okay? And it's going to go in a straight line because it will be acted upon by two forces. So let me ask you last time. So you have the electron here. It's going to speed up. Do you want to do that? Because you apply a voltage. An electron wants to go from the minus to the plus, it's going to speed up. And then it goes here. Here you have a capacitor. You see the capacitor? The electric field goes from plus to minus, right? So where is the electric force on the electron? The electron wants to go to the so positive. So the electric force will be down. Do you all agree with that? The electron wants to go down, so the electric force will be down. What about the magnetic force? So if it was a positive charge, you have this way, and then um, a magnet this way. So if it was positive, what is the magnetic force? So the magnetic field goes this way, so towards you, right? So pulling this way, magnetic field that way, so the force will be down. But because it's negative, so the force is up. So up equals down. That's why it's called the velocity selector. It's a great, great question for conceptual questions. So don't uh, space out. Any question? OK, so OK. And then uh, what's going to happen? So a positive charge wants to circle out around the magnetic field. I have something to show you, but I'm um, running out of time. So, but at the same time, it's moving forward. So you, did, you see it's doing two things at the same time. It's moving around the magnetic field and it's moving forward. So it has this very interesting motion. So we we'll see that next time, but the thing I forgot to show you is, is this. Oh, I think it's gonna be for the pop quiz. You see, when you have a loop of current inside the magnetic field, it will be applied by a torque. 
such as your magnetic dipole, okay, will want to align with the magnetic field. And if you lose contact, it will keep spinning. So that's how a motor works. So make sure the, the concept 